Hopefully, by this point, you're getting the feeling that deployments are pretty central to things in Kubernetes. We've used them to define a Tomcat service, scale it to multiple pods, and tell a service how to access the pods inside our deployment. As a foundation for diving deeper into Kubernetes, let's discuss more about deployments, their nature, and how to work with them. Deployments are a way to declare a desired state for your application. Kubernetes uses your deployment, usually defined in a file, to deploy your application according to how you describe it in your deployment configuration. You've already worked with a couple basic deployments to define a Tomcat container and then scale it. Deployments give us the advantage of letting us describe the semantics of our application and its needs in a central area and let Kubernetes handle a fair amount of the details for us. They're not the only way of deploying applications to Kubernetes. In fact, in earlier versions, they didn't even exist. You had to work with the lower level objects, for example, the pods, the containers, the images, yourself, and create your deployment the way you wanted it. However, they have become the de facto standard and insulate you from having to handle otherwise quite complicated tasks on your own. With deployment objects, you can do a variety of things. You can create a deployment. You can update an existing deployment. You can apply rolling updates to pods running on your cluster. You can roll back to a previous version, or you can pause and resume a deployment. We've already done the first thing on the list. In fact, we've already done the second as well, when we set the existing deployment to a replication of factor of four in the previous lecture. Applying rolling updates is very useful. We can use deployments to ease the pain of updating an application. By using rolling updates, we can use Kubernetes replication function to only update a subset of our replicas at any given time to a new version of our application. So the upgrade could occur without any noticeable downtime to the user in a properly architected application. We can also use a set of functions to roll back to a previous version of a deployment. If an update caused a problem, or for any other reason we'd like to go back to the previous version of an application, we can use the deployment rollback feature to go back to a previous version. And finally, you can pause or resume a deployment. And this is exactly what it sounds like. The application running as part of the deployment can be paused or resumed with some simple commands. Working with deployments is equally simple as many other things using Kuba CTL. Kuba CTL is your gateway to working with deployments. Here's a useful commands and what they do. First, you can list deployments using the Kuba CTL get deployments command. Then, you can also view status of deployment rollouts using the Kuba CTL rollout status command. You can also set the image of a deployment using the Kuba CTL set image command. And finally, you can view the history of a rollout, including previous versions that you're able to roll back to using the Kuba CTL rollout history command. Let's go through each one of these commands in detail, and you can follow along. We'll start off with one that you're already familiar with, Kuba CTL git deployments. We've used the git deployments command to see what's been running on our mini kube before. By typing Kuba CTL git deployments, we're able to see what is running and a variety of information about it. In this case, Tomcat deployment has four replicas. We can use the rollout status command by typing kuba ctl rollout status deployment and the name of a deployment to see the status of a deployment and if it's been rolled out. Once the command is executed, it'll tell us if it's been successfully rolled out or not. Let's refresh our memory on what our Tomcat deployment looks like. Let's look at the deployment file. In this file, you'll notice we specified one container named Tomcat using the container image Tomcat colon 9.0. This deployment has one container. The name is Tomcat of that container, and it specifies the Tomcat colon 9.0 image from Docker Hub. We could use the kuba ctl set image command to change the image in any container, as long as we know its name and the new image that we'd like to set it to. Let's upgrade to the newest version of Tomcat, 
using the Koopa CTL set image command. To do so, we'll need to note the name of our container and the name of our deployment. With that information on our screen, let's use the Kuba CTL set image command, specifying our deployment, deployment slash tomcat dash deployment, the name tomcat for our container equals tomcat colon 9.0.1. That will set the image name on the tomcat deployment. Let's execute the command. As you can see, the deployment was successfully updated. The Kuba CTL rollout history command can give us information about the history of a rollout of a deployment. In this case, let's specify Kuba CTL rollout history deployment slash Tomcat dash deployment to get the history for our Tomcat deployment. As you can see, it'll note we made two changes recently. We can get the information and the details of a given revision by typing the same command with the dash dash revision equals the revision we'd like to look more, more information about. Let's look at number four. As you can see in this situation, it's given us the information about what the state of that deployment looked like in that revision.